In this part of the lecture, we will be talking about optimal income taxation. Income taxes are a very common form of taxation. You can find them in almost every country. And they are a very, very important source of revenue. What is challenging about the design of, of income taxes is that high taxes may provide a disincentive to effort. So if I know that for every additional euro that I earn, I have to pay 80%, so 80 cent for every additional euro to the taxman, I don't have an incentive to increase my work effort that much or to work more hours or find a higher paying job because simply most of that these additional earnings go to the taxman. So in other words, if tax if income taxes are very high, that can that makes the the relative cost, the opportunity cost of leisure very low and we would expect people to exert less effort. On the other hand, income taxes not only are a source of revenue, but they are also a very important instrument for redistribution. You will find that in most countries, you have higher tax rates for high earners and low tax rates for low earners. There are some countries, for example, my own Germany, where up to a certain level, you don't pay any income tax. And only if your income exceeds a certain level per year, you actually pay income taxes. And then it progressively increases, the tax rate increases as your income gets higher. But so with this, with this in mind, so on the one hand, you have this, this disincentive effect and on the other hand, you have redistribution effects that calls for an equity efficiency trade-off. So there is a big equity efficiency trade-off and there is a scope for the optimal design of taxes, which depends on the, you know, the, the, the workforce, the income distribution, and obviously also uh, the government's preferences for uh, redistribution. So we will introduce in this video a little bit of notation, although we will only need it then in, in the following videos. Um, so a person's earnings here are denoted by Y. And uh, so the person has to pay tax on earnings. So taxes are a function of earnings, which means they may not be uh, they not, may not be constant. So this this may reflect the fact that uh, people with higher incomes tend to pay higher tax rates than people with lower incomes. So not only do they pay more in dollar or euro amounts, if let's say the tax rate is 20%, then obviously if I earn 100,000, I pay more in taxes than when I earn 10,000 a year. But it's also that I not only pay more in terms of the euro amount, but I also pay more in terms of tax rate. So, so for example, in Ireland, if you earn uh, 20,000 euro a year, your tax rate is, um, is uh, 20%. Whereas if you earn 200,000 euro a year, your tax rate is somewhere close to uh, below 40%, but, but somewhere close to that. Um, so when analyzing income tax systems and when thinking about the design of them, we will have to distinguish between two very crucial concepts. One is the average tax rate, which is the tax that you pay on your, on your or is the average tax rate that you pay on your total earnings. And we have to distinguish that from the marginal tax rate which is the additional tax you pay on an additional euro that you earn. And we will see that both will have very different roles and, and will have very different implications. Because for someone who is at a given tax rate already, 
we will see that what matters for that person, if that person rationally decides whether to work more or not, or whether to take a higher paying job or not, what matters a lot is the marginal tax rate, not the average. Because the marginal tax rate tells you, okay, for every additional euro that I earn, how much of that is going to the taxman. And you can imagine that if that is very, very high, suppose it's 100%, then obviously people will not try to earn more because uh, the, these, this additional money would all go to the tax man and then they would not have a very strong incentive to actually earn more unless they were extremely altruistic or would really care about how much tax they pay. But that, that, that's not consistent with the behavior we typically observe. Um, right, so we will then, we will look at this through the consumption leisure trade-off that we already uh, talked about in lecture five. So people con can consume whatever uh, income is not is not is left after uh, after they pay their taxes. So they consume their net income. We don't assume they do savings or anything, but you could incorporate that obviously as well. And uh, people's welfare depends on their consumption and either their work hours or their hours of leisure. Right? But, but again, we will assume that people have 24 hours in a day or maybe they have 16 hours net of sleep. And in those 16 hours, they, they, can, they can spend those 16 hours on consumption and leisure. And then the number of, and, and obviously, sorry, on work or leisure and obviously the more leisure they have, uh, the, the higher is their utility level. So, so work actually has a negative effect on people's utility. But through work, they earn money and they can consume and that gives them a higher utility. And so they have to balance those two things. basically. But before we get into that, let's look a little bit about uh, at uh, tax rates in, in, in some countries. So I'm, I'm giving you two examples here. I'm giving you the example of Ireland and I'm giving you the example of, uh, of the US. So here for Ireland, the number is uh, for uh, late 2020. Um, so, so very recent. And this is the marginal tax rate. Sorry, th this, is, this is the tax rate in Ireland that you, that you pay. Right, so so um, how much is the amount of tax that you pay depends on your income. So for an income be between zero and 35,300, for every additional euro, you pay 20 cent to revenue. Yeah? And so, so that's why the, the, the slope of that function is 20% for anything below that threshold. Yeah? Anything above that threshold, um, every additional euro is taxed at 40%. So Ireland has those two tax brackets. And so then every additional euro here is taxed at 40%. So, so, so that's why the slope uh, of, of that curve is a lot steeper. Okay, so so it, the, the way to read this is, so if your income increases, your tax bill also increases proportionally. So the tax bill here is the amount of euros you owe to the tax man. It, it increases proportionally. And if it exceeds that threshold here, um, it increases proportionally, but at a higher rate. So does that mean it's better to earn less, maybe slightly below than slightly above here? No, because any income below 35,300 is taxed at 20% and only what exceeds that threshold is taxed at 40%. And that's also the reason why the distinction between marginal and average tax is so important. Because someone whose income is just about above that level, so let's say at 40,000 euro a year, um, their marginal tax rate is 40%. So if they go from, I don't know, 40,000 to 40,001 euro, from that one euro, they have to pay 40% to the tax man. But they also, uh, their, their average tax rate is a lot lower because most of their income is taxed at 20%. 
Right, so otherwise, uh, you know, if, if, if then all of a sudden, as you cross that threshold, uh, your entire income was taxed at, at uh, 40%, that would create a huge incentive for people to stay below that threshold. Whereas now with this king point, it doesn't really. So here is uh, another way of looking at it. Here is not on the uh, vertical axis, the tax bill, but it's the uh, the, the, the marginal tax. So this is basically how much from every additional euro of income do you pay to the tax man. And again, for this, this is the, 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 the two tier system in Ireland or the two bracket system whereby you have up until the threshold, uh, you pay 20% and then any for any euro above that in, in annual earnings, you pay 30, uh, you pay 40%. So here is an example. So take someone with a 70,000 euro annual income. Um, that person pays and that, and let's calculate that person's tax bill. So the marginal tax rate for that person is 40%, right? Because their income already is in the higher bracket. So if it, if it went beyond 70,000, every additional euro would be taxed at 40%. And by the way, that's just the income tax, um, the marginal Total tax in Ireland is actually higher because you have also PRSI and USC um, that that you would also have to pay. And if you're in the public sector, there's also the the, the so-called pension levy. Right? But but this is this is now just for for it for the income tax. Yeah? But the marginal tax rate of forty percent is not that person's average tax rate. So the average tax rate is only a little bit under thirty percent because. A huge chunk of that person's income, namely a bit more than half, is taxed at 20%. And then anything that exceeds that is taxed at 40%. And so then the weighted average of that is 29.9%. So the average tax also increases with income because then obviously the, the higher your income, the greater is the chunk of your income that gets taxed at the higher rate. Um, but the average tax is a lot lower typically than, than the marginal tax, at least for most people. Now let's compare this uh, to the situation in the US. Um, uh, this, this is taken uh, credit here to, to Stephanie Stancheva, who teaches uh, the, uh, the equivalent course at Harvard um, using the same book. And so she has um, drawn the same graph for the US. And you can see in the US that the tax system is a lot different. So you have a lot more tax brackets. Right? So, so the taxable income, uh, you have here again, the tax bill as a function of the taxable income, and it starts at, at 10% and then it goes, the slope increases gradually. And for the highest earners, it's, uh, it's 40%. But we will also see that the marginal tax rates for, for, for any equivalent income are a lot lower in the US than in Ireland or in pretty much any other European country. So when people from the US move to Europe, um, as much as they enjoy very often and praise things like the health system and, 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 and all sorts of, you know, publicly provided and public goods that are here, um, they always get a shock when they see their, their tax bill, um, when they get their first paycheck because taxes in Europe are considerably higher. So you can see this here. So the, um, so for example, to be in the highest tax bracket, which is as of a similar uh, amount as, as you would pay in Ireland, you have to earn an annual income of over 400,000 euro, right? So let's take the, the threshold as it is in Ireland, um, which is very similar to this one here. So remember it was 35,000, so that's, yeah give or take uh, about here. So, so here at that threshold, it would jump from 15 to 25%. Whereas in Ireland, it, ju it jumps from 20 to 40%. Plus then there is USC and PRSI on top. And so there are huge, there are huge differences between, between countries. Um, and uh, there is a huge debate in, in economics that has been going on for, for over 20 years now. Um, because one of the puzzling facts um, or one of the interesting stylized facts, it may not be that puzzling, but it's interesting, is that people in the US work a lot more hours per year 
than people in Europe across the board. Um, you know, the, the, even the, the, the hardest working uh, Europeans on average as a, in, in, a, in a country work a lot less than people in the US. They have more holidays, they work less hours in, in, in a week and so on. And one reason um, why this may be the case is that the marginal income taxes in Europe are much, much higher than in the US. So working more just doesn't pay off as much in Europe as it does in the US. And that may be one explanation why uh, people in Europe work less than, than, than in the US. Obviously, there could be other reasons such as, you know, differences in work ethic, um, other cultural differences uh, and so on. So, so this, this is also a, a, a very active field of research for, for economists.